Are you struggling to know who to vote for, where to cast your vote in the next election? That question could actually be asked in lots of countries at the moment. Honestly, if we had a none of the above option, most of us would probably tick it. But I'm talking about the 1st of November elections in my home country, South Africa. My name is Graham Codrington. Uh, I'm a strategy planner, a scenario planner. Uh, I look at the future and I help organizations to think about the future. And we have to take politics seriously. It's one of the biggest influences on all of our lives. We can't just not vote and we don't have a none of the above option. So what, what do you do? Well, some people will tell you that you must choose between the ANC and the DA, uh, that these are the two biggest parties and that only the big parties have the ability to do anything or make any changes. But that's not true, especially not in a local election. And that's what our election is on the 1st of November. It's about who represents you on your town or city council and who actually gets the job done. So if the current person who is doing the job in your area is not getting the job done, uh, if, 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 if it's a mess, vote for somebody else. Uh, and if you've probably been represented by one of the big parties, uh, the ANC or, or the DA, or possibly even the EFF, and you're concerned about uh, levels of corruption, levels of delivery, levels of service, well then vote for somebody else. There are three things, I think, that are going to help us make a decision about this election. The first is... For most people, it can't really get much worse than it is now. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, we could have an apocalyptic event and it, it, everything could completely collapse. But in terms of kind of creaking infrastructure and barely functioning systems, you're not really going to get worse than probably what you've got now. So voting for somebody else who doesn't have the experience, who's maybe from a smaller party and would like to give it a go and is stepping up to say, I would like to represent you. Well, what have you got to lose is the first point to make. The second point to make is that I actually think that the future of democracy in South Africa needs to follow where a lot of other democratic countries have gone. Uh, democratic countries that are not showing a broken and dysfunctional political system. And that is to coalition. We, we need to move towards an environment where we are confident that we can vote for smaller parties and then those smaller parties have to work together uh, in order to make something happen. Here's a, a thought for you. Uh, the, the time that Johannesburg, the city I live in, uh, has probably functioned best in the last 25 years was when the DA and the EFF were in coalition with each other. It didn't last long and there was obviously a little bit too much political infighting and I think that the concept, the understanding of what it takes to be a successful coalition government is not kind of in place yet. But what happens is two parties that are reasonably far apart ideologically are forced to get together, forced to do the things that can be done and for most of us citizens that's the obvious infrastructure and basic services. Just get them done. And then some of the more fringe and, and scary in both cases of the DA and the EFF, uh, some of their fringe views, uh, they, they can't achieve because they can't find a connection in the middle. We're, we're looking for the middle ground where politicians do not play ideological games uh, with our future. And because in coalition they're watching each other closely, uh, there's less chance of collusion and corruption in the system and they just get on and deliver the services that we need. So that's really what we're looking for. So vote for smaller parties giving expression to the possibility of a coalition government. And the third thing I think always when you are voting is you need to vote your principles and your conscience. Yes, sometimes you need to vote tactically and that's probably more of an issue when we're having a national election. 
But now, why not? Why not vote your conscience, vote for the party, even a tiny party that maybe at one level doesn't have a chance of getting into power? It's not going to be worse than it is now. But what you've done is you have signaled, you have sent a message to say, those are the policies, those are the principles, those are the people, the types of people that I would like to support. It will give them a little bit of a boost. And you know what? If you've got the time and inclination and the resources, uh, why not volunteer to help them in advance as well? Uh, go out and hand out flyers, put up posters for them, stand at the shopping centers over the next few weekends and voice and show your support for these candidates, especially for independent candidates who might not have signed up for a party, but if they were to all get into our local legislators, all get into our smaller municipalities working together, I'm sure that we'd see an improvement. For most people, it really can't get much worse than it is now. You don't know who to vote for anyway. So vote for a small party or an independent candidate who matches what you believe, who you are prepared to give a chance and see what happens. And hopefully we can build a future built on coalition government, which will get us away from a lot of the nonsense we've been experiencing over the last few years. My name is Graham Conrington. Nobody is paying me or asking me to do this video. These are just my thoughts as I understand where South Africa is going, as I see scenarios for South Africa's future. I think that this 1st of November is, as always, an important election. But maybe this time, we the voters should use our voice differently, not just support the establishment as it has been. I'm going to vote for an independent candidate in my ward, in Johannesburg, Ward 74. I hope that you have somebody that you feel that you can vote for. Even if it doesn't change the world immediately, it sends a signal and you've done your duty as a citizen. All the best for the election season coming up. It's going to be crazy.